A. It's almost Canada Day, and it's my friend Allie's birthday, and she loves Tim Hortons. So why not make a Tim Hortons cake? You could say that Tim is to coffee and donuts what I am to cake. You're welcome, Tim. Really needed my endorsement, so you're welcome. You can send the check to, this is one giant cup. And it's a good thing, because it's gonna be my model for the cake I'm making this week. I'm gonna recreate this with vanilla cake, coffee buttercream, and fondant that I'm gonna dye to look like all these rich colors. And I'm gonna throw in a few Timbits. What do you mean you don't know what Timbits are? Canadiana lesson number one. Tim bits are the little holes in the donut. Here we call them Tim bits. I'm glad they're not called Tim's bits. <laughs> that could be misunderstood. To begin, I bake five six inch round vanilla cakes. How many did I bake? I don't remember. Four. I baked a number of. <laughs> to be. <laughs> To begin, I bake four six-inch round vanilla cakes. Okay, that's we just go through every possibility. I bake three 12-inch. I removed my cakes from my pans, leveled them, and then I cut three of them in half and left two of them full. It was definitely five cakes. Yes, I just remembered. <laughs> it's time to assemble this Tim Hortons cupcake. That makes it sound like cupcake. <laughs> Coffee cupcake. I actually did something really cool. I infused my simple syrup with coffee. Bing. Once my cakes are nice and moist, I stack them and layer in luscious coffee buttercream. At the top, I'm actually going to reserve the two layers that I didn't cut in half. And this is because eventually I'm going to flip it over and I want the cup to be sturdier at the bottom. And once it's all stacked up, I put it in the fridge to chill. I started with the cake upside down. I'm not gonna turn this upside down because there's coffee in it. I shaped <laughs> the cake. I measured this cup and so, mm. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let me show you how I did that. I need to carve this cake to resemble this coffee cup, but it's upside down at the moment. So I start to carve the cake, a smaller circle from the top out to the bottom, round and around, slowly carving off little by little. Don't take any risks, okay, in cake decorating. I'm Canadian. I don't take risks. Just take it careful, take it easy, eh? And then once you're happy with the shape, give it a good crumb coat to lock in all those crumbs and stick it in the fridge to chill. Or if you're in Canada and it's winter outside, just put it outside. My cake is nice and chilled, the crumb coat is solid. I'm gonna give this cake one more icing just to make it nice and smooth. And when I'm happy with it, I'm gonna stick it back in the fridge to chill again. And then I'm gonna move on to the Timbits. I use my sphere pan to bake the giant Timbits, which are basically like two halves of a bowl. I actually only have one sphere pan, so I had to bake this cake over and over and over again. So I made two vanilla Timbits and four chocolate Timbits. Instead of using buttercream or ganache to glue my cake halves together, I wanted them to be really solid. So I glued together the chocolate Timbits with melted dark chocolate. Then I glued together the vanilla with melted white chocolate. Now it's time to give these Tim Bigs some flavor. Because I want these to actually look like big Tim Bits, I'm going to make donut glaze. Donut glaze is really simple. It's just icing sugar. What the hell did I make it out of? <laughs> oh, cream, cream, cream. Thank you. And I basically just add cream to my icing sugar slowly until it's the consistency that I desire. 
For the vanilla glazed Timbits, I added a bit of vanilla. For the lemon, I added some fresh grated lemon zest. For the cherry, I added a spot of pink food coloring that's nice and bright. One at a time, I put a Timbit into a bowl and poured the glaze on. What makes people think of Canada? I think it's winter. Um, what else? Winter. D definitely winter. Uh, snow. Winter. And um, Tim Hortons. And Tim Hortons in the winter. For the coconut ones, for the glaze set, I pressed coconut all over the Tim Bakes. And then, what else did I do? Oh, the cinnamon sugar. That was fun. That was the only one that was glazed differently. It didn't have any donut glaze. I actually brushed on some piping gel and then mixed some raw sugar with cinnamon and rolled the Timbit in that concoction. My Timbigs are looking gorgeous, but I need to put them aside to set. I'm gonna do that at room temperature, so I put it on a rack in my kitchen, and I'm gonna get back to my coffee cup. Coffee cup. <laughs> it is a coffee cup. I'm cop copying a coffee cup. Copying a coffee cup. Copying a coffee cup. <laughs> you know what I need? I'll tell you what I need. I pre-dyed my fondant to get the distinct burgundy color I was looking for. Now I'm gonna roll it out to cover the coffee cup. I've chosen to cover the coffee cup around the cup because there actually is a seam on the cup and it's really tall. So if I choose to drape my fondant over, it will just rip and tear and pull down the cake. So this is a bad idea in this case. I'm gonna go around the coffee cup and then trim it up, trim the bottom, trim a nice seam, trim the top, make it look sharp. I've used this technique before, like in my leprechaun hat video, which you can watch here, and in my Mother's Day flower pot video, which you can watch here. The fondant is looking great. I need to flip this cake so it's right side up. I've got to move on to creating the lid. Ah! It's kind of nerve-wracking because it's like some kind of a molded, pressed plastic, so it's hard to replicate, but I've got to get to it. So I roll out brown fondant, then I make the outer circle, which I then want to fold down over the cake. I make this inner circle and this inner half circle, and I make a little template so that I can cut out this thingamabob. Majiggy, eh? What is that? This is probably like a patented Tim Hortons cup excavation. It's something serious, and I'm just talking about it like, whatever. A lot of the details you have to do for this kind of cake, you have to do by hand. There's no stencils, there's no tool, there's no Tim Hortons lid cookie cutter, size extra large. So you've got to improvise, eh? I need to make the iconic Tim Hortons logo on the cup. I just enlarged the Tim Hortons logo on my computer. I cut it out of the paper and then I used that paper to cut it out of my fondant. Now that the letters are cut out of the paper, I have a stencil which will help me lay my fondant letters onto the cake. The logo on the cup is actually horizontal. Well, not horizontal, diagonal. What's wrong with me? Tim Hortons logo is actually horizontal across the cup, which can be <laughs> the logo, for heaven's sake, is <laughs> diagonal on the cup. See? Diagonal! It is diagonally horizontal. <laughs> On every Tim Hortons cup, it says, always fresh. It's a promise, it's a guarantee from Mr. Horton, but because this cake is for my friend Allie's birthday, I'm gonna write, Allie's fresh, eh?
Luckily, I have the perfect tool for these letters. It's called a tappet. I just need to cut out Ally's Fresh, tap it out, and then place it on the cake above the Tim Hortons logo. I'm gonna pop this lid on my coffee cup. I just need to bend the sides of the lid ever so slightly down around the cup, and I have to do it gently so that I don't crack the fondant. Tim time. I just, Tim Hortons is gonna steal that <laughs> Don't bleep out shit because I mean it. The cake looks great. What a way to celebrate. Happy birthday to my friend Allie and happy birthday to Canada. Eh? We should do a Canadian a maple leaf that says subscribe. <laughs> I'm gonna celebrate by eating a Timbit. If it was a real Timbit, you just pop the whole thing in your mouth, right? But this Tim Big, I'm not even gonna attempt that. So I'm just gonna take a really big bite. Oh, Canada, our home and native land. Oops, did I touch my mic? I felt it. I, did you see my thumb went, oh, shit. What the heck is wrong with us? Why don't we have a Canadian flag? Who is in charge of getting a Canadian flag? Who? You're fired.